Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at the Twin Peak module from Epoch Modular. The uh, Twin Peak is a dual filter design by Rob Hordyke, uh, very similar to what's in Rob's Blippo box. Um, the design is based around two low pass filters um, that are run in parallel uh, and have equal gain, but one is phase inverted. So uh, when they're combined, um, they create a bandpass filter that has resonant peaks at both the bottom and the top of the band. Um, what's extra cool about this design compared to running like a low pass and a high pass in series is that you can create, uh, you can cross the cutoff frequencies uh, completely and whatever peak is at the top um, becomes the top of the band and whatever peak is at the bottom is the bottom of the band. Um, this allows for some very unique sounding modulation since the signal won't be completely filtered out just because the lower filter gets swept higher than the higher frequency filter. Uh, it also allows for the response to be blended um, between uh, low pass and, and band pass modes, um, which has very cool tonal and uh, kind of performance uh, benefits. The filters themselves uh, sound fantastic and tuned to have um, a very high range of resonance um, without uh, self oscillating. So when fed a short um, trigger or gate, they have a beautiful ringing response um, and have a very tight reaction to modulation. So uh, you get some very clean sidebands from, from audio rate modulation. Let's take a quick walk through the panel and then just jump right into some examples. So starting from the top, we have the individual frequency controls for peak A and peak B, um, and then the modulation attenuverters for uh, peak A and peak B. So you can attenuate as well as invert incoming CV signal and modulate each, uh, each filter or each peak uh, independently. There's a dual mod input attenuverter. So this external CV will modulate both filters equally. And the res ping control is the resonance for both filters. Curve is the control that blends between low pass response um, of just peak A or a band pass where both peaks are in play. And lastly, the level in fade control um, is a crossfader for these two inputs. So if you just use input one and turn this all the way up, you'll just hear input one. But if you use both inputs, turning all the way clockwise, you hear input one. And as you turn counterclockwise, you hear more of input two. So like a, like a typical crossfader, which is really awesome when blending uh, different signals or pinging signals and audio signals. Um, it's a really cool feature just to have on, uh, on the input. Um, the other inputs outputs, you have a one volt per octave input. So this will track along with, uh, oscillators. Um, there's your CV D mod, which is the CV that applies to, um, both a and B, uh, your individual mod a and mod B inputs, which go through these attenuverters as I mentioned before, uh, CV input for res. And of course the final filter output. Um, all right, let's, uh, jump into some patches. All right, let's, uh, let's start with basically just going through uh, the filter and getting a feel for how it sounds and how the controls work. Uh, so I've patched a sawtooth into input one and a square wave into input two here. So we can cross between the two and listen to the two basic waveforms if we wanted to uh, audition between them. Um, start off in low pass mode. So it has a very nice, subtle, warm sound with the resonance all the way down. And as we sweep the resonance higher, we can hear it close in on a center frequency. And with the resonance all the way up, you can really hear it move across harmonics. thing you'll notice when it's in low pass mode is peak B really doesn't have much of an influence. On certain spots you may hear it slightly have an influence on peak B, but um, largely when you're in low pass mode, peak A is the, the primary or singular filter, which um, is actually really cool in some aspects uh, that I'll show you in a moment, uh, where we can be modulating this heavily, move into low pass mode and not hear that modulation, and then as we move it to band pass mode, get some more uh, activity. Speaking of bandpass mode, let's move into bandpass mode. Again, we have the resonance all the way up, so we can almost pick out 
different harmonics. And then if we wanted to now take this bandpass and move it around the spectrum, um, I've got a random voltage here. Let's put it into the D mod, which affects both filters equally. Turn up the amount. Get this somewhat vocal kind of format sounding filter. Crank up the speed a little bit. Now the cool trick I was mentioning earlier is we can apply this to peak B by patching just into the CV mod B input. Uh, and the cool thing is we'll still hear this lower harmonic that we've isolated with peak A, but we can get some movement around the upper harmonics. Or even have this move lower. And here's how you can hear where, even though the filters are crossing over each other, you don't hear the audio completely filter out. There might be one tiny spot where if the peaks are right on top of each other, the volume will drop down a little bit. Um, but unlike a low pass and high pass in series, it'll never just filter out completely, which is really cool. But now if we were to move back to low pass, And this is a very cool performance trick. I've used this a lot um, when playing live and I have this filter in my setup. Um, I'll have some kind of modulation, a sequence or something that adds even more movement to the sound applying to peak B. Um, and I'll just be starting with sort of a, the classic low pass manual sweep with peak A and bring this up as I want to add more and more motion to the patch without affecting this sound. It's very, very cool. It's an awesome feature. as is this input blend. Obviously, we're just listening between saw and square wave, so it's not as interesting as two very different sounds, but it's super useful in a performance aspect. Turning the resonance down, get back to that sort of warm buzziness. And it can really get screechy without going overboard. It's a very wide range, and this control is not overly sensitive, which is fantastic. Um, and you'll see that when we go to the, the next example with pinging, but um, it's a very nice, controllable range of resonance, and it never really gets, like, crazy out of control. Cool, let's take a look at the sounds it makes when we send some pings through it. Okay, here's an example of the uh, the pinging. Um, I'm using uh, two very short, uh, very narrow triggers. Uh, narrow triggers going in here, and I've turned the resonance all the way up. I will adjust this a little bit so you can hear the tonal differences. Um, and the cool thing about using um, two different triggers at different rhythms here is you can now use this to cross-fade cross fade, uh, between uh, rhythms and blend them together. Um, I'm going to start in low pass mode and then adjust the curve into band pass. Um, I've got two channels from the DPO going into the um, each each peak mod tuned at slightly different frequencies, so you can hear what audio rate modulation sounds like with those two. Again, so here's just the low pass. You can hear that other other rate. It's basically just double. Let's go over to the band pass. So I've tuned the peaks here to. Still have the body and have a little bit of a top end bell sound to it. Adjusting resonance lower is basically like a dampening. So you can go from just these slight clicks to more and more ringing. And of course, remember this is under CV control if you like to. Let's so hear some of this audio rate modulation. The, uh, the DPO pitch and the Twin Peak pitch are both being controlled by the same one volt per octave signal. The cool thing here is we can invert this audio signal too.
Throw a little delay in there. There's nothing really to stop us from patching in, say, an audio rate signal, and we have our trigger and an audio rate signal. So again, here's where the uh, input crossfader really comes in handy for getting a lot of different sounds. Okay, here's an example of the filter um, tracking with um, a pair of oscillators, actually. Um, I've got a sawtooth wave going into input one and a square wave um, tuned lower going into input two. Um, the one volt per octave signal is going to all three oscillators coming from the Rene, just playing a 16 note uh, sequence. And then I have an envelope going to CVD here to modulate both peaks. And I've kind of tuned them to somewhat of a, a formant um, but what I want to show you is just how much the curve adjustment and the uh, input crossfade adjustment and changing the resonance can get you through, you know, three or four pretty, pretty different sounding tones. There's a little bit of delay in this. And that's the Epoch Modular Twin Peak, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope you guys check this out. I've been totally blown away by this filter. Um, not only by the tonality, but the versatility. Um, and with the curve and level um, crossfade inputs and everything, it's become an integral part of my little performance system because I can have so many things patched in there, using it a little bit like a submixer, transitioning between sounds. Uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I've been super impressed. Uh, tune in next time. See you guys later.